Let's have a word of prayer together. Precious Father, we are grateful unto you for who you are. Eternal God, we appreciate you because of your love towards us. We thank you because of your calling upon our life. And we do know that your calling is without repentance. We offer our lives unto you. I will pray, Lord, that you make the best use of this one and only one life that we have in Jesus' name. That in us and through us, your name will be glorified. Bless us as we share together right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, it's a pleasure uh, being in our midst. And um, it's been some time that I've been away. But praise God, we are back together. And the God of heaven will use us all for the glory of his name in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, the members of the choir have uh, gotten us ready and prepared for a life in ministry. A life with God, a life for God, and a life for our generation. Um, if you were here for the search, the scripture, we looked at the message on the anointing of Saul as the king over the land of Israel. And uh, that will be the cue from where I'm taking the message for today as we talk about the place of anointing in ministry. Shall we all say that? The place of anointing in ministry. Can you say it one more time? The place of anointing in ministry. When we look at many people uh, in the church, they are people that love the Lord. They are people that want to serve the Lord. They are people that want to do the will of God. Let's uh, look at ministers in particular. Ministers and ministry because they want to succeed in ministry. But unfortunately, not every minister succeeds in ministry. Many workers in the church, no matter the area of work they are, uh, they want to be their best. They want to give their best. And they want to glow for God's glory. But again, unfortunately, not all of them are able to be all that they intend or desire to be. Why is it that ministers are failing? Why is it that ministries are being destroyed? The reason is because anointing is lacking in the life of many many people let's go to the book of samuel chapter 1 first samuel uh, chapter 10 rather first samuel chapter 10 i look at it from verse 1 2 to 7 then samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head upon the head of Saul, and kissed him and said is it not because the Lord hath made thee or anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? Stop right there. We're still going to go all through to verse 7. Here, Samuel is saying that, yes, Saul, I am anointing you as a king, but pay attention here, uh, Saul. It is an instruction from the Lord that I am doing what I am doing. The truth is, the Lord himself has called you. The Lord himself has appointed you. The Lord himself has chosen you. And the Lord himself has anointed you. Look at it again. And someone took a vial of oil and put it upon his head. And kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord had, what was the next word? I can hear somebody. Anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance when thou art departed from me today. Then thou shalt find two men by Richard's sepulchre in the border of Benjamin at Zelsa, and they will say unto thee, The asses which thou wentest to seek are found. And lo, thy father hath left the care of the asses and sorrowed for you, saying, What shall I do for my son? Then shalt thou go on forward from thence, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor, and there shall meet thee three men going up to God to Bethel, one carrying three kids. 
and another carrying three loaves of bread and another carrying a bottle of wine and they will salute you men will salute you Amen. and give thee two loaves of bread gifts you come your way Amen. which thou shalt receive of their hands and after that thou shalt come to the hill of god where is the garrison of the philistines and it shall come to pass when thou art come thither to the city that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a sceptre and a tablet and a pipe and a harp before them and they shall prophesy and the spirit of the lord will come upon you and thou shalt prophesy with them and shall be turned into another man i say you shall be turned into another man and let it be when these signs are come unto thee that thou do as occasion serve thee. For God is with you. Turn to someone and say, God is with you. Tell somebody the anointing of God will come upon you. Tell somebody the power of God will rest upon you. Tell somebody the glory of God will come upon your life. In the name of Jesus. When you look at all this, you see that anointing plays a vital role in the life of a man, in the ministry of a man. We're going to look at three points together. Number one, we look at the meaning of anointing. Number two, the motive behind anointing. And number three, the method of anointing. The meaning, the motive, and the method. To anoint is to ceremonially confirm divine or holy office upon a priest or a monarch. When we talk about monarch, we're talking about the king or the leaders. And that is done by smearing a rubbing, a rubbing with oil upon them. It means to consecrate. It means to bless. It means to hallow. And um, anointing is a divine enablement. For ease and success in life and the ministry. I repeat, anointing is a divine enablement for ease of ministry and for success in ministry. Whatever ministry God has called you into, I declare upon your life, you will be successful. Amen. The anointing of God will come upon you in Jesus' name. Anointing is the very presence of God in the life of a man and walking through a man the primary purpose of anointing is for exploit is for exploit and the exploit is not for your self glory but the glory of the lord the exploit is for the honor of the lord the exploit is for the blessing of your generation and i declare that you will be a blessing to your generation in jesus name the purpose of anointing the essence of anointing is to approve you to approve you before the world a man may be called and commissioned but without anointing his life will be full of struggles and challenges and that is why you see a lot of people in the ministry they are in the ministry truly but it's full of struggle it's full of challenges it's full of problems uh, uh, when they think one problem is over another one is coming up because the anointing of god is lacking in their life and there are some people that have anointed themselves god has not anointed them they've called themselves god has not called them they have ordained themselves god has not ordained them please pay attention here there are even some people that men ordain and men anoint but not god but not God. People like that may say, so so and so pastor anointed me, and so and so pastor ordained me, and they may even say, I have the certification of, of my uh, ordained. Uh, but, listen to this, has God called you? Has God ordained you? Has God anointed you? That is why I come back to First Samuel. Samuel told Saul that is it not the Lord that has anointed you? Listen, it has happened in the spirit realm. I am only demonstrating it in the physical. Ask yourself, do I have the anointing of God upon my life? The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Pay attention to this. And this is very, very crucial. Before you run into ministry, a man may be saved, genuinely saved. 
a man may be sanctified, genuinely sanctified. A man may even be baptized in the Holy Ghost and yet not anointed for ministry. Not anointed for a particular purpose. Because there is a difference between being filled with the Holy Ghost and being anointed for ministry. People don't get it clear. People don't understand. And that is why you see some people, they say, I am saved, I'm sanctified, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. And all they do in their life is they can speak in tongues. There is no question about that. But where are the evidences of the power of the Holy Ghost? They don't understand. Jesus said, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, You shall receive power. After what? After the Holy Ghost is come upon you. For the fact that you have just the Holy Ghost, that power there signifies the anointing, the unction and the power to, to, to perform, the unction and the power to do exploit, the unction and the power. He says, You shall receive power after. Not because the Holy Ghost has come upon you, but after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. Now, that is the exploit. The Holy Spirit's empowerment is for exploit. And so, if you are there, you have the Holy Spirit baptism, we praise God. It's just to prove that God is still alive. But, you need a step further. And that is what makes the difference between a lot of people in the church today. That all they do is they just, they, they just speak in tongues, they speak in tongues, they speak in tongues. But nothing is happening. There is no signs and wonders following their ministry. There is no excellence and perfection following their ministry. There is no progress following their ministry. There is no innovation following their ministry. Because they have not received that power. The power will come upon you. I said the power will come upon you. And the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. So it's possible to be saved, sanctified, and baptized in the Holy Ghost, but without anointing, your life and ministry will amount to nothing. Many today claim to be filled with the Holy Ghost without anything to show for it. When we look at anointing, anointing uh, ordinarily um, in the Old Testament. Uh, is uh, just pouring oil on somebody's head, which is a common practice uh, in the Jewish community. Uh, anointing sometimes because there are different anointing, and some people don't understand. And many churches now they have oil, they just pour on people, they pour on people, and then they say, You're anointed, you are anointed. There must be spiritual significance to it. And if it is just doing it for religious purposes, well, you get religious response or results. So, when in those days a stranger comes to your house, the householder welcoming them will wash their feet, the feet of the stranger, and then anoint the feet of the stranger with oil. That is called an anointing. But then, officially, it was a rite of inauguration into each of the three typical offices of the Jewish commonwealth or in the Jewish commonwealth. Number one, the prophets were occasionally anointed to their office. The prophets. First Kings chapter 19 verse 16. And the prophets like that were referred to as messiahs or the anointed ones. So when you talk about the word messiah, what are you talking about? The anointed one, the anointed one. You find that in Chronicles, First Chronicles, chapter sixteen, verse twenty-two. Not just the prophets are anointed; priests also get anointed at their first institution of the Levitical priesthood. When they are first called into the priesthood, they all get anointed into offices. But later on, later on, the Priests were no longer anointed. That became a referred, um, uh, a referred thing for the um, for the prophets, for the kings alone. Now, the kings gets anointed too. 
when they are being sworn into office and there are times that some objects are also anointed in the church today do we necessarily go by pouring oil on people no do some churches still do that yes some churches do it it depends on the level of understanding of everybody but understand that even in the old testament when Samuel was talking to Saul Saul does not know God so much in person yet God has not spoken to Saul directly and yet Samuel said in verse 1 of that chapter 10 that God has anointed you praise God and uh, that's what the Holy Spirit does in our life and ministry today He's the one that anoints. He's the one that equips. He's the one that empowers. He's the one that enables us to be able to do all that needed to be done for the glory of the name of the Lord. People anoint for healing of the sick. you find that in the book of James chapter 5. And the... Uh, uh, People still anoint for other things, like I said, but then spiritual anointing with the Holy Ghost is conferred upon the believers. Upon the believers. Upon the believers. The Holy Spirit is the one anointing. I want to ask you, who anoints the believers today? The I can't hear somebody. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Now, if you have any oil, that you are rubbing on yourself, good for you. Amen? If you rub oil and more than oil, if God has not anointed you, it's a waste of time. And I can tell you of people out there that oils will pour on them, soaking them, wetting all their clothes and everything. But when God is out of it, it amounts to nothing. Saul was preordained to reign over Israel. Before Samuel spoke with him. First Samuel chapter 9, verses 15 to 17. Now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear a day before Saul came, saying, Tomorrow, about this time, I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin, and thou shalt anoint him to be captain over my people Israel, that he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines. For I have looked upon my people because their cry is come unto me. And when Saul saw Saul, when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said unto him, Everybody read the next thing. Behold, the man whom I speak to thee of, this same shall reign over my people. I pray God will find us out. I pray God himself will appoint us. Before Saul knew anything, before he knew anything, the call of God was upon his life. I hope another time we come, we're not digging to what qualifies Saul. Today it's not so much of the qualification or the prerequisites, just to give us the foundation of this issue on anointing. He was anointed he was approved, but without this anointing, his life, his ministry, his leadership would have been powerless and hopeless. That is why, as a worker in the church, no matter where you're working, in the choir, as an usher, in the children's department, in the music department, as a teacher of the world, as a preacher of the world, we need anointing. I said we need anointing. Even if you're a cook in the church, you need anointing. No matter what you do, understand, without the anointing of the Lord, it will not amount to anything. Now come back to 1 Samuel chapter 10. Samuel proclaimed Saul the captain over God's people. When God anoints you, you become a captain among men. You become an authority. 
and as an anointed man or woman of God, whatsoever you say stands. When you are anointed, the storm, the wind, and the sea, they will obey your voice. And then you'll be able to say, peace be still. And peace will be still. Satan, sicknesses, and diseases, as well as demons, they will hear your voice and disappear. Because of anointing. When you confront yokes because of anointing, the yoke shall be broken. The Bible says the yoke shall be destroyed because of because of the anointing. Because of the anointing. When you see yourself always struggling and struggling and struggling in one area or the other area, all you need to pray for is the anointing of the Lord upon your life. And uh, it will come in Jesus' name. Look at Job chapter 22 verse 18. Thou shalt also decree a thing. And it shall be established unto thee. And the light shall shine upon thy ways. Why? Because of the anointing. Because of the anointing. Like so. As a result of the anointing. Whatever had been missing in your life. Look at it. Because of the anointing. The ass that was missing. Was it found? Yeah. Everything you have lost. You recover. In the name of Jesus. Whatever has been stolen from you is going to be restored in Jesus' name. You are going to be moving forward in life to make progress in life. And in everything you lay your hand upon to do in Jesus' name. You see, Saul was favored because of the anointing. Favor is coming your way. In the name of the Lord. Your life will be acceptable to men. Your ministry will be acceptable unto men in Jesus' name. Look at it. Look at it. If you go back up to that passage we read in chapter 10 of First Samuel, uh, and then you see that gifts were also coming unto Saul. Unto Saul. When the anointing of God is upon your life, people will turn to you and favor you. I said men will favor you. Those that have forgotten you before, they will remember you for good in Jesus' name. Because of the anointing. Joel chapter 2 verse 28 and it shall come to pass. Afterwards, that I will pour out of my spirit upon how many flesh? All flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see vision. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days. Days, when are those days? I said, when are those days? Now, now, now. In those days will I pour out of my spirit. The spirit of the Lord is coming upon somebody here today. The power of God is coming upon somebody here today. And when it comes, your life will not remain the same. Your ministry will not remain the same. Your Exploits will not remain the same. The Bible says in that first Samuel that a new spirit came upon Saul. He became a different man. Somebody's status is about to be changed. Those that knew you, those that knew Saul, they saw him. They said, what has become the son of Kish? They said, is Saul also among the prophets? Those that knew you before, they will see you again and they will marvel. Amen. Because of the anointing of God coming upon your life in Jesus' name. And so please understand, anything you do, don't just take it lightly. You need the anointing of God to come upon you. So in Joel chapter 2 verse 8 where we read, the promise was there. And now come into Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verse 8, which I read to you before. Ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. The Holy Ghost that was promised in the book of Joel is going to come upon you. And after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, something else will follow that uh, baptism in the Holy Ghost in the thing is called power and that is why Jesus in Luke chapter 10 verse 19 says behold I give unto you I can hear somebody power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over every part of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you somebody is prevailing in Jesus name now look at Jesus the savior of our soul the captain of our life. 
The very Son of God. Listen, you know, I told you, you may be saved, sanctified, and baptized in the Holy Ghost, you still need anointing. Jesus Christ was the most talented and the most gifted person the world has ever known. He came with, he had those things, he owns those things, he came with them. But for your sake and for my sake, he still needed anointing. He was born of the Spirit. You must be born again. Amen? Born of the Spirit. Jesus was baptized in water. And the Bible says, as he was coming out of Jordan, what happened? Right away. The heavens opened. And then the Spirit of the Lord came upon him like a dove. Even at that time, Jesus really won't do anything. The Bible says he was then led into the wilderness. And I was privileged to be among some people that were in Israel uh, some few days or few weeks ago. And we saw the exact environment where that happened. We saw and witnessed the whole thing. And he was led into the wilderness. And then after the wilderness experience, he came back. Open your Bible to the book of Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verses 18 to 20. Now, before we get to verse 18, look, let's look at verse 1. Luke chapter 4, verse 1. And then verse 14. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from where? From Jordan, and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. He was led into the wilderness. Now, look at verse 14. And Jesus returned from where now? He returned from where now? From the wilderness. In the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. Thus, Jesus began to do exploit after he returned with the power of the Holy Ghost. He went into the wilderness, the waiting period. He went into the wilderness, the anointing moment, period. He went into the wilderness, the empowerment moment. And that is why many people, they just get born again. Before you know it, they say, hey, I have a ministry, I have a ministry. Don't you look around. There are people here, even from among us, that you can count on the finger of your hand. That will bolt out and say, I have a call, I have a ministry. Go and check out many of them. They are out of the ministry. Because they have not been called. They have not been anointed for that assignment. And go and check with some of them that still say they are still struggling. You see that they are just struggling in the arm of the flesh. You better stay where God has called you to be. And do what God has asked you to do. And stay blessed. And you will be blessed. Amen. I said you will be blessed. Now, let's look at chapter, that same chapter 4, verse 18. And the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That same Spirit is upon somebody here today. Because he had, what's the next word? Anointed me. Anointed me. Anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. That did not happen until after he went into the wilderness uh, to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted. As you read all this, don't just read for the sake of Christ alone. It has happened to Christ already. Now read for yourself. God has appointed you. God has approved you. And now he's anointing you to preach the gospel to the poor. If the anointing is not there, you cannot preach effectively. 
If the anointing is there, souls cannot be converted under your, under your life and ministry. That is why a lot of people are not looking for gimmicks. They are not looking for, for things to make it work. When they cannot preach the gospel of salvation, now they will tell you, we need to bring in all these uh, professional uh, ideologies into the church. We need to bring this, uh, let, let's do about trade. Let's do about, um, um, what is it that we do again? Uh, um, let's go for sports i'm not saying go doing all those things are wrong i'm not saying they are sin but i'm saying they cannot take the place of the holy spirit they cannot they cannot they can bring people to the church if that's what they're looking for but they cannot convert any soul jesus said that the spirit of the lord is upon me Look at the two statements there. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. You will preach the gospel. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. You will perform that. He has sent me to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to who? The blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And then he closed the book, verse 20. And he gave it again to the minister and sat down. What's the next statement? Read what follow. Even though he closed the book, the people's eyes could not close. Their ears were still open. They wanted to hear more because of the anointing is coming your way in jesus name the apostles two things happened to them on the day of pentecost acts of the apostles chapter 2 understand these people had the spirit of god but and even these people have been doing something before jesus left That is why in Acts of the Apostles, Apostles chapter 2, the Bible says, when, have you, are you there already? Acts chapter 2, look at it. The Bible says, when the day of Pentecost was, the word fully was there. Was fully calm. Was fully calm. Then things began to happen. And then, pay attention here. Even though it happened that very day. Please pay attention here. How many people were there in the upper room? The Bible says about 120 people. Am I right? Now, when you look at the life of the people that were there. I'm driving to something here. Even the apostles. Did you hear miracles, signs and wonders from all of them? Not all of them. Were they all baptized in the Holy Ghost? They were all baptized in the Holy Ghost. But some of them were appointed and anointed for certain ministry. Even uh, Paul that wasn't among them, he also at his own time got anointed. And that is why some people in our churches today will just say, well, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. And all they can do is speak in tongues. You will not only speak in tongues. You will heal the sick. Amen. You will cast out devils. Amen. You will save souls. Amen. Through you, lives will be turned around for good in Jesus' name. Amen. And in your own very life, because the husband man must be the first particle of the fruit, in your own very life, God will be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at Joshua. Joshua was just a servant to Moses. Ministering to Moses. Now again, when the time comes for me to talk about qualification and the requirements for this anointing, I will dig more into some other things for you. And so, his primary assignment was just to minister uh, uh, as a servant unto Moses. But after Moses' departure, Numbers chapter 27 verse 18, And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee, Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit, and lay thy hand upon him. 
that is another way of anointing somebody lay thy hand upon him now look at it he didn't say pour oil upon him lay thy hand upon him Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 9 34 verse 9 and Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom for Moses had laid his hands upon him and the children of Israel hearkened unto him and did as the Lord commanded Moses now look at it Joshua although he was a servant Joshua although he was a young man when the anointing came upon him by the laying on of hands everything turned around people that were older than him mature than him experienced than him everybody began to listen unto him and follow his commandment that is why when you are anointed you are positioned as a king and you will rule and you will reign over principalities and over powers in jesus name elijah of course we didn't know exactly at what point elijah had the encounter with god but elijah at some point in his life showed up with the power of the lord and so we knew that that man was called of god anointed of god empowered by god he was a man with fiery anointing he confronted the prophets of Baal and single-handedly he killed all of them because they were walking against God. When the anointing comes upon you, the boldness will come. The courage will come. You will not be afraid of anybody, anywhere, for any reason in Jesus' name. When you see a man that says, I'm a believer, I have the Holy Ghost, and then they see cringe at the, at, 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 the, uh, at the table of the enemy, they don't have what we are talking about. And then they cannot stand up. You know, as we travel to Israel, we go to a place that is the hub of Islam. Turkey. And those that travel with us, they are here and then we were there at the airport and then i said to myself are we just going to be here and we were to be there for about three hours or maybe four hours i don't remember now i was just going to be here just sleeping and just uh, snoring and just eating and just talking and i said no no matter what kind of a place this is god must be glorified and I told the people, I said, we are going to live here. And I looked around. People don't know. And then I saw a place in the, in, in the terminal there that is uh, free, that God has reserved for us. Praise God. And I said, we are going over there. And then we went over there. It's an open place. Everybody will still see us. So, and then uh, we began to sing. Amen. Those of you that travel, am I right? And then we began to pray. And we began to call the name of Jesus in an Islamic land. And people were coming and they were gathering and they were watching. Who are these people? And, what, and some of them were coming to us. Where are you from? Where are you from? Where are you from? And some came and said, thank you for your courage and your boldness to declare the name of Jesus in this kind of a place. And some people came and said, we are missionaries going to the thought, the terminal where we were, that we are to fly with that plane. I said, no, we are not flying. They said, they are going to that place as a mission. And then they said, please pray for us. They are missionaries going on a mission, but the courage and the boldness to declare the word of God in a strange land was not there. Did we pray for them? We pray for them. And some of the people will even come. Now, Corey came up. That's why when you have the Holy Ghost and the anointing of God, you will not be afraid of anything. Now, could they have arrested us over there? Of course, yes. Did they arrest the apostles? Of course, they arrested them. Did they imprison them? Yes, they imprisoned them. I would have just told them, release this boy and take me alone. Amen? But they couldn't even come near. Because of the anointing. When the anointing is there, you will not be afraid of anything. Somebody shout anointing. anointing. Somebody shout anointing. anointing. It's coming your way. Yeah. It's coming your way. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. You will be surprised to see some white people coming to join us where we're singing, coming to dance with us, coming to... When the power of God is upon you, the apostle said, judge you among yourselves. Do we because of fearing you then we disobey God? God forbid. God forbid, even in the holy land, which is supposed to be holy land, we got to the pool of uh, Bethesda, and then they said, they don't want us to 
Help me, those of you that went. They don't want us to pray out loud. Even we are supposed to be the center of prayer. I said, we will pray. Did we pray? And then we now moved to, uh, to see within the same environment. We went inside the pool itself and then we screamed all we could. We shouted all we could. Amen. I guess the priests and all the people that were there, they were wondering what kind of human being are these people. Praise God. And then some people from other countries, they came and they joined us also. And then they stayed with us all through the time we finished. And then we prayed for them. And then right while we were there, even our talk guy, we brought him inside our midst. He said, Jew. And then we prayed for him right there. The, if you feel like, yes, if you feel like doing it, just give it to, the, to him. It's to the glory of the name of the Lord. To the glory of the name of the Lord. They persecuted him then. Thousands of years ago. And they are still persecuting him today. Still today. So it's up to you and to me. To stand for God. And declare the totality of the counsel of God. But you can't do that without the anointing of the Lord. Without the unction and the power of the Holy Ghost. And it's amazing. Even on Mount Camel. Where Elijah confronted um, the prophets of Baal. We were on that mountain. We were praying and then the sea came and said, hey, The people here will not want you to pray. We will pray. Amen. Do you know that that is physical over there? Do you know that even here where you are, the devil does not want you to pray. But in the name of the Lord, you will pray. Amen. You will take authority. You shall decree a pain and it shall be established unto you. And light will shine upon your path in Jesus' name. Joshua was anointed and he did exploit for the Lord. Elisha took over from Elijah and the anointing of God came upon him also and he did exploit for the Lord. It is your time, it is my time. We will do exploit for the Lord in Jesus' name. What then do we have this anointing? Three, I mean, a few things. Uh, anointing is to set you apart. Anointing sets a man apart from other men. It distinguishes you. It separates you. It makes you unique. It confirms divine appointment upon a man. It confirms the assignment of God for a man that is appointed. There is a difference between appointed, appointment, and assignment. When you are appointed, for what have you been appointed what is the assignment for you please pay attention and this is what some people in the church don't understand when they think because they have been helping to usher helping in singing helping with children they then say i have been called to be a pastor uh -uh. you have been appointed for what purpose some have been appointed to be in the music ministry stay in your ministry some have been called to be in the counseling stay in your ministry some into administration know the call of god upon your life and if you have been called to be a minister to be a pastor there is nothing wrong with that stay in your ministry some people are running when nobody has sent them when the uh, uh um the anointing comes it is to confirm the assignment of god upon your life it confirms divine approval divine approval upon the calling on the ministry of a man it confirms the abiding presence of the most high god in the man's ministry it confirms the unction of god upon you when the anointing comes uh, it makes you to be both yourself your ministry to be acceptable unto man you lead this way they follow you you lead that way they follow you you know i think i told you before People don't understand why people are following our leader in the church. It's because of anointing. And then he says something, even when you don't really like it, you still do it. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. You still do it because he's a man of authority. The words of the pastor is the word of the king. He decrees a thing, and it must be so. And um, whether you like it or not, God backs him up. I need a better one. Yeah. Amen. When the anointing is there, 
your life and labor and ministries are followed with signs and wonders. So if you if you say I'm in the ministry and there is nothing to show for it, ask yourself, something is lacking. I need the power. The power of the Holy Ghost. When the anointing is there, it makes you work very, very smooth and very easy. You know, two days ago I was talking with uh, a pastor, and then he said, well, uh, sir, we don't have money. And that's why we cannot plan program. Uh, we have to wait until money comes. I said, no, that is not how to do it. Amen? I said, if you have to wait till money comes, you will never plan anything. I said, plan by the leading of the Lord, and then the resources to make it happen will follow. Amen? Amen. Don't you know the Bible says... These signs shall do what? Follow them that believe. You act by faith, you act in faith. And then I said, do you think if I were to wait until we have money before we buy the conference center, do you think we would have gotten it? He said, no, sir. I said, that is what I'm talking about. Because as at the time we're buying the conference center, I don't think we had $7,000. And yet, by the time we're done with our convention, we had spent over $700,000 without borrowing one cent. Close to a million dollars. So, I said, you don't wait until you have the means. You trust the Lord, you plan for God, you plan with God, and then God will send resources for to meet up the, 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 the work and to get it done in Jesus' name. So with the anointing we're talking about, your life and your work becomes easy and very, very smooth. And then the society, spirits, when I say spirit, you know what I mean by spirits? Every spirit, demon, devil, Satan, uh, whatever their name, situations and circumstances, and Satan himself, they will submit unto you. Amen. When the anointing is there. The Bible says to break yokes, to lose bounds. And then you find out, we read it in Luke, it's also there in um, um, Isaiah chapter 61. Let's look at it again, Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison, the opening of the prison, somebody is coming out of prison today, Amen. to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn in all that mourn, and then, and not say mourn in Zion, so, the anointing of the Lord is for exploits. And the Lord will use us. In Jesus name. I said the Lord will use us in Jesus name. Finally. Finally. How do we get this anointing? Different ways. We saw again. Someone talking to Saul. Just doing it God's way. Different people. Different ways. Sometimes it is by laying on of hands. And that's exactly what Paul the Apostle did with Timothy. He said, by the laying on of hands of the presbytery. Laying on of hands. At other times, it is by pouring oil, as it was in the Old Testament. Again, some people still do that today. But, most important, directly by God. By God. By God. And the Holy Spirit of God. When the Holy Spirit anoints you, equips you, empowers you, nothing and nothing can stand against you. Nothing will stand before you. The Lord is saying that we have been called, we have been commissioned for ministry. But without this anointing, we continue to struggle and struggle and struggle. And today can be somebody's day. A day of the touch of the Lord. A day of the move of the Lord. A day of a complete and total turning point in your life. A day of a change of your ministry. A, a day of a change of your calling. A day for God to be glorified in and through you in Jesus' name. Shall we rest upon our feet? Anointing 
Follow me. Anointing. Follow me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost follow me. Anointing. Follow me. Anointing. Follow me. Anointing. Follow me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost follow me. Anointing follow me. Begin to talk to God. Anointing, follow me. Begin to talk to God. My life must not remain the same. My ministry must not remain the same. I need the power of the Lord. I need the presence of the Lord. I need the unction of the Lord. I need the approval of the Lord. I'm not Follow me. I'm not Follow me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost follow me. Please pray. I'm not for me. Check the Lord to visit you afresh. Even David, after he had been anointed, he again said he needed a fresh, fresh oil of anointing upon his head, upon his life. He said, but my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Ask for fresh anointing upon your life. The fresh oil of the Holy Ghost. Yes, some of you were filled with the Holy Ghost, but there is nothing to show for it. But the fulfillment of the power of the, of the Lord says, you will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You will receive power. You will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. If you have lost speaking in tongues, the gift of speaking in tongues, you can reclaim it today. You can reclaim it today. Lord for the glory of your holy name make a difference in my life make a difference in my ministry whether you are a woman or you are a man whether you are old or you are young it says in those days I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see vision of the Holy Ghost upon my life. Visit me afresh, O Lord. Touch me one more time, O God. Touch me with the touch of the Master. Touch me with the touch of the Lord. Are you really serious? You want this anointing? Are you sure you really want this power? Are you sure you want this move of God in your life? 
Are you sure you want a distinguished life, a distinctive ministry? Are you sure you want to be a blessing to your generation? Are you sure? Are you sure you want the outpouring of the Holy Ghost upon you afresh? Cry to the Lord. Cry to the Lord. Anointing of the Lord, come upon me. Come upon my life. Come upon my, my, my life. Come upon my ministry. New insight, new revelation. Ask and ye shall receive, seek you will find. Knock shall be opened unto you. Saul became a new man. Anything in me that needs to be changed, Holy Ghost changed there. Saul received a new tongue. He prophesied with the prophets, Oh Lord, number me among the prophets of God in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we are grateful unto you for this insight into your word. For this revelation by the power of the Holy Ghost. Making us to know that the arm of the flesh will fail us. That mere knowledge is not enough. But that we should put our knowledge to work. That the power of God might come upon us. Father, many of us are tired of spinning the wheel. Many of us are getting cold. Many of us are getting discouraged because nothing is happening. We come today with new hope we come today with expectation we come today with assurance of faith we come today expecting from you father visit us afresh in jesus name holy spirit of the lord holy spirit of the lord holy spirit of the lord come upon us your people in jesus name Anything and everything that will not be consumed with the fire of the Holy Ghost, Father, consume them now in Jesus' name. All the weaknesses, all the laziness, all the lethargy, take them away in Jesus' name. Dear Father, Lord, energize us yourself, equip us yourself empower us yourself oh lord make our life distinguished make our ministry distinguished oh god of heaven let the approval of heaven come upon us in jesus name let the presence of god be made manifest in us and through us in the name of jesus father we declare and decree that from today oh lord oh god miracle signs and wonders will follow us your people in jesus name oh lord we receive the anointing of the lord we receive the anointing of the lord we receive the power of the lord upon our lives upon our ministry upon our church in the name of jesus from today we command anything we bind on night shall be bound in heaven. Everything we lose on night shall be loose in heaven. The Lord will work with us. The angels will work with us. The power of God will work with us. In the name of Jesus. Father in heaven, King of glory, I look up unto thee and pray that from today, whatsoever we lay our hands upon to do, we prosper in Jesus' name. No more struggling. No more struggling. No more struggling. Our ministry will blossom. Our homes will blossom. Our family will blossom. Our businesses will blossom. Our members will blossom. Our church will blossom. In the name of Jesus. Father, 
on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost came. But only few of the apostles had records of what they accomplished. Lord, I declare for everyone under the sound of my voice that our life will not become like a vapor in the name of Jesus. Whatever department we are, whatever our calling may be, whatever our gift and talent may be, oh Lord, oh God, oh, let there be manifestation of the power of God in us and through us in Jesus' name. Do wonders in our hands. Perform miracles through us. Thank you, Father, for answering. I pray today, Father, for as men that are here, they are hearing about the anointing, the unction and the power of the Lord, but they have no personal encounter with you. And I told them that Jesus was conceived of the Holy Spirit. He was born by the Spirit of the Lord which is an emblem and a symbol of us being born again lord i pray for such people that are present here in this meeting today not yet converted not yet transformed with their children or elderly people i pray right now that the saving power of the lord will penetrate into their heart right now and deliver them from the power and the nature of sin in jesus name for those who love the God that are having trouble with assurance of salvation, Father, confirm your assurance in them in Jesus' name. Hold their hands, O Lord. Lead them on the way and by the way of righteousness and purity, holiness and righteousness in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray nobody here will miss heaven. Nobody here will miss heaven. Oh Lord, oh God, anyone here rising and falling, I declare by the reason of Almighty, you will stand for God. You will stand in the faith. You will stand in righteousness. In the name of Jesus, every conflict in your life, every confusion in your life, I remove them right now in Jesus' name. The courage and the strength to stand and stand strong. Oh Lord, give unto them in Jesus' name that inner guilt of what had happened before i erase it right now in the name of jesus because it is written if the son therefore shall make you free you shall be free indeed satan the accuser of the brethren i command you get out of the lives of the people of god now in jesus name we appreciate you father we glorify your name in jesus name we pray